Greg here with Studio Marianne. I'm just going to show you a quick trick today uh, for making uh, mulching up your your drum sounds here. So uh, over here in Edison, <coughs> we've got a little drum or a little loop thing that I was working on the other day. So it sounds sort of like that. And I'm going to show you a trick with the synth Harmer. Uh, for messing around with it. So what you do first, uh, so this is, if you put a, if you put a sample in here, you may have noticed that it becomes mono. So I don't want that. I want the full stereo image for what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do here is we'll go convert left channel to mono, drag that in track number, or uh, part number A, or part letter A. And then in part B, we're going to do undo left to mono and convert right to mono. Drag that in there. So now, uh, and then here, sorry, in the envelope before we get started on B. So B is the right side. So we're going to move this to 100%, oops, geez, which is right around here. There you go. Uh, and remember to enable that envelope. And then on the other side, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to pan it to the left. So there we go. Or, or to the right, whatever. Doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> I'm not super fussy about stuff like that. So, anyway, so now if you take this and put the speed down to zero, we're doing the same thing on both sides because we want them to be in sync. So you can hear as you scrub through the, the track, we're getting this uh, no pitch bending or anything like that, but we can really scrub through this sound. Um, now, the B channel is going to be only on the left and the A is only on the right, which we did backwards, but it doesn't matter. Um, but I want to be able to scrub through them at the same time. So what I'm going to do to do that, I'm just going to go in here in the master track, uh, go down a couple. I'm going to drop in the formula controller. I'm just going to put a simple formula in here. We'll do um, B times C plus A. So basically what I'm doing is uh, this is a number between 0 and 1. So um, this, or I don't know what it is. Anyways, but it's going to change how much range we have with the C knob. And then this is going to change the starting point of where that C knob happens. And what we're going to do is we're going to map the C knob to the time uh, parameter of this, uh, of Harmer, right? So we link it to formula controller master out, input mapping, or mapping formula to input is just perfectly fine, just like that. We're going to do the same thing over here, link to controller, formula controller master out, perfect, except. And now when I scrub with, oops, let's go in there. Um, so now when I move this guy around, I think maybe not. Oh, right, sorry. <laughs> so we have to turn the B knob up a little bit, otherwise we're multiplying by zero. So we've turned that up a bit, and then we can move through like so through this thing and we're doing so on the A and the B track and, and they're in sync. So you get a stereo scrubbing of your little drum thing. Now if we go here and we set it up to new, then we can start sampling this. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just clicking a key on the keyboard. I'm, kick, I'm doing middle C so that it's not detuned or anything. Uh, and that now allows us to do these weird scrubby sort of things where we go like Which sounds pretty cool to me. Um, now <clears throat> The other thing that you can mess with is the smooth parameter. By default, it's sent to 500 milliseconds, 
which is quite a bit when you want to scrub through a drum sample. So 205 seems good. And now I'm, you know, I'm really just stabbing into the dark here or whatever the expression is. Um, yeah, and then now we're able to scrub a little faster. This might even be a little bit too... It might be a bit too fast. Let's bop it up to about 300. Again, just guessing here, really. So it can sound pretty interesting, and now, but basically what I do this for, like this on its own doesn't sound super awesome. Oh, sorry, the other thing that you can do that I would encourage trying is uh, clicking the legato thing. So now I can do sort of things like where I click. And then I can detune by just clicking different notes on the on the um, on the thing. I think this actually kind of worked better at 500 milliseconds. So Um, yeah, and then so you would record something like that, or I would record something like that, uh, and then I would drop it into a slice X really quick, pop it in here, um, when it's already sliced, whatever. I like to do this play till end thing. Um, and then yeah, and then you've got this nice little thing where you can play around with the drum sounds. Um, yeah, so we're going to use that for little fills and such in, a, in an actual tune. And that's it.